Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com and today I'm going to be going over WP Optimize. I'll be going over its free version, I'll be going through all of its options, settings, and I'll be giving you recommendations for what you can do to keep your site optimized. WP Optimize used to be a simple database optimization plugin that was acquired by the team that owns Updraft Plus and they have done a lot with it. It is now a fully fledged optimization plugin and it's actually not bad. So let's start. You'll go through your standard WP Optimize page. You'll go through them. You'll have the standard. You can clean out all the database items. I wish that they added more options that you find in uh, WordPress Sweep, which is another free alternative. But you can't have everything. You can go through. You can click Run the Optimization. It'll clean out all the items, and then you can click through, view your tables. Very simple. It's always been the same. Now we're going to get to the more exciting features. Under the Images section, You'll be able to handle image compression. This is a free utility. Currently, they have the option to use two different services, which are RE Smush It and Nitro Smush. Both are free services. I prefer RE Smush It. They also have their own plugin on the WordPress repository if you wanted to use it. And there are some really intelligent tools in here. You can automatically compress newly added images. That's nothing special. And it will do it in the background and on its own for you. You can also enable a meta box on the images in the media section if you want to. I'll show you what that looks like. You can come over here. And then as you can see, you can compress the image and choose its own specific niche settings. There's not a whole lot of reason to bother with that in my opinion, but it's there in case you want to. And then under the compression options, you have the option to prioritize the maximum compression, which will compress the images as much as it can. You can prioritize the retention of detail, which uses a lossless compression, meaning no image quality is lost and only metadata is deleted. Or you can do custom and kind of set the middle ground, the middle ground being quite literally the middle of the scale, which is a good medium between image quality and maximum compression. In the ideal world, you want to do a little bit of lossy compression. But if you don't care for your images getting modified at all, then go ahead and check prioritize retention of detail. Under the compression service, I recommend using RE Smush It over Nitro Smush. Nitro Smush is a good service. It's better for really large images, but RE Smush it seems to be a little bit faster and a little bit more dependable from my experience. Under the preserve options, you can preserve EXIF data. If you know what this data is, you know whether you need it or not. It's effectively just extra data that's left over from the camera and or software, for photo mostly for photographers. Effectively, if you're just running a standard WordPress site or a WordPress blog and you're downloading all your images off of some stock up photo site, you don't need that. So you don't want this option checked. Back up your original images. This is incredibly important if you're using lossy compression. Any sort of lossy compression, I recommend you back up the original images and then you have them backed up and then automatically cleared out after seven days or so. The reason for that is what's going to happen is, is you're going to you, you're going to effectively run the image compression, and if you have lossy compression, you're gonna no, your images are going to get compressed, and you're either going to notice that they look terrible, or you're not going to notice they look terrible, which is the worst scenario. So you want to give yourself a little bit of leeway, but you don't want your backups to eat up all your web hosting space either. So seven days is a good time period if you're using lossy compression. And this is best when you're using the automatic image compression. If you're the kind of person that only wants to manually compress the image, then you're able to do so. I am using the lossless compression on this demo site, so I'm just going to uncheck those options so that way I don't have extra folders to deal with later. For the pro version, there's extra options under here for unused image cleanup and lazy loading of images and iframes. We're only talking about the free version in this video to avoid confusion and just to maintain what most users will be using it for. Under the cache section, now this is where the good stuff is. You can enable page caching. Page caching is a simple feature that will cache the pages as HTML and serve them from your server. The advantage here is if you have a static site, whether it's a blog or a small business site, and it's being served from cache, it uses less system resources and it's delivered faster. If you have any sort of blog, new site, there's effectively 
unless you have a dynamic based website, there's no reason to not be caching the pages. So you want to enable the page caching. You're able to then purge the cache here. And this will delete all of the cache folders and files that will let you know. After it runs through, it deletes them and it says, hey, the cache is empty. And we can also modify the cache settings. You can generate a separate cache file for mobile devices, which is important if you're using a mobile specific theme like through WP Touch, or if you serve the cache pages to logged in, or you can serve the cache pages to logged in users. I would never recommend using this option because serving pages to logged cache pages to logged in users can really mess up the user experience, particularly if you have dynamic content, whether it's a little bar that says, hello, Scott, or hello, Jeff, at the top right, it will not show in this setup. Some plugins will create a specific page cached version for that user, but this is not one of them. You can then also set the cache lifespan, which is how long the global cache will last. So after 30 days, the pages will be regenerated. This is globally. So if you added no new content, nothing was done, at least once every 30 days, the cache files would be regenerated. You can set the same time period you want. I recommend for most situations, you could do 10 hours. It's a good amount. If you have a really large website, you'll want to increase this. If you have a very static website that you barely touch or barely modify, you'd want it to be longer. Effectively, if you don't update the site, you could set it to be as long as you want. You could set the months to be 999 months and the cache would effectively never expire. And then under here, we have the preload section. Now the preload section is really good. You can click a button which will automatically preload it. If you're using an SEO plugin like Yoast SEO, it will check the sitemap to preload content. If you don't, then it will try to crawl the site if it was a real user. Alternatively, you can use the schedule for the preloader and you can select a schedule type. For most situations, the same as the cache lifespan is the best option. Unless you have a specific use case or you want the cache to preload more often than it purges, there's no reason to not do that. So say you have a really large website and the cache will never expire, but you want the cache to run on a very frequent basis. You could the preload to run on a very frequent basis. You could select it daily. However, for most situations, leave it as same as cache lifespan. Now comes the advanced section. This is where you can write your exclusions. You can exclude specific URLs, login pages, my account pages, etc. One thing that this plugin doesn't seem to make clear is if it by default ignores WooCommerce pages. It should, but it's not marked anywhere. So if you have WooCommerce installed, make sure to go to the WooCommerce documentation. It will show you what to do for cache plugins to make sure that pages aren't cached and that the customers get a expected user experience. Otherwise, if you know, if you have something to exclude, you can put the URL, the subdirectory here, and you can make use of wildcards using a star. GZIP compression, if there's GZIP already on the server, whether it's by default or you have an HT access rule, you can just go ahead and, and enable here by, it says that I already have it enabled, so it's detected it doesn't need it. Static file headers, browser static file caching headers are currently enabled. Effectively, this just tells the browser to cache CSS, JS images on the server and serve them to the end user only if they're not stored locally. Very basic, very standard. Then there's the basic settings tab. Frankly, the settings tab being the last item should probably just be merged kind of into the database under a new tab because they're database setting cache settings. They're not other settings. You can set up the automatic optimization of your database, which you should do. You should enable an auto cleanup functionality, depending on the size of your site. Once daily is fine or once weekly is probably what I recommend for most sites once a week. And then I recommend that you have it delete the following items. Optimize the database tables to remove overhead. Remove post revisions. Do not remove auto draft posts. 
and have it remove trash posts, have it remove spam and trash comments, and then have it remove transient options. This way, the most amount of junk that can safely be deleted is if you have something auto-drafted, if you're working on a new post, or you're working on a new homepage design, auto-drafts are like auto-save functionality in, well, in Microsoft Word. If you don't have it, then when you're working on something and it gets it's deleted or it disappears, that's going to be your way to get it back. So you don't really want to ever delete auto-draft content unless you know that you have nothing that you're currently working on. In which case, you can just manually delete it using the database tab that we went over in, in the beginning. You can add logging settings, which you frankly don't really need. This plugin's fairly basic and straightforward. You can enable trackbacks or disable them. They should be disabled. And then you can enable or disable comments. Comments should be enabled. And that's really it. Um, it's a really basic plugin. There's not many options, but it's quite powerful. The premium version looks promising, but it's not quite to the level of a full optimization plugin. There's no asset optimization. There's basic image optimization. I don't even think the lazy loading functionality supports Chrome native lazy load at the moment. It could use some work, but for a basic website, and if you're already using WP Optimize, being able to just check off the page caching functionality or have your images be compressed using free services with lossless image compression, it's a great tool to have. And now we're gonna run the image compression, lossless image compression on this image. So it was 93 kilobytes according to this. We're going to open it in a new tab. If you ever wanna get the weight of an image, open up the file source and then just do this and it reads 93.1 kilobytes. We're going to compress it and see what it says. Connecting the Smush API server, and then it's going to upload the image to their server. It will then go through and compress that image, and then the ser my server will download it again. It says the file was compressed from 92.78 kilobytes to the same thing. So it didn't save any bytes using the lossless compression. So let's customize a little bit. Let's meet in the middle. Let's do half. And now let's see if we can go back and recompress that image. Looks like you can't recompress the image if your settings have changed. That's something that should definitely be added. However, because we can just re-upload the image, it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to do the customized and we're gonna compress it or it's sending it to the server. It's going to re-download it. And remember, the image was 2,000 by 999 kilobytes. And it says it's once again saved 0%. So I think what's happening here is this is either an issue with the plugin or it's an issue with my server. I'm going to guess that's an issue with the plugin, but I can't prove it. So let's try switching the services one more time to see if that was the final issue. So uh, come over here, we're going to make sure that the advanced options that we're using Nitro Smush, okay? And we're gonna try one more image compression. Otherwise, I'm just gonna say use the EU Image Optimizer. All right, connecting the Smush API server. Please wait, compressing the selected image. And let's see, does anyone think it's gonna work? Well, it's taking a while this time, so hopefully that means it is indeed working. And it saved 0%. So there we have it. It looks like the image compression functionality isn't working at all, which is very, very disappointing. Nevertheless, there you have it. Everything that you need to know about WP Optimize. If you have any questions about it, you can ask me in the comments below or you can check out my website. You can use the contact form on there if you have any general questions or you're looking to have your website optimized. If you have any support related questions, you can take it to the WP Optimize WordPress.org page. They will help you and they're quite active on there. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.